Hello and welcome to the York Creators Podcast. My name is Ben Porter and each week you can join me as I chat to someone from York's creative community. This week's guest is Charlotte Dawson. Charlotte is a visual artist and arts event facilitator. Her latest creative project, York River Art Market, is now in its third consecutive year, winning the award for the best community project at the 2017 York Culture Awards. We discuss the origins of the market and its growth over the past three years, including the charities it supports, the help and advice she can pass on to those interested in developing their own artistic skills, and who her dream collaboration would be with. So Charlotte, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. So how did you get into art then? Was was creative stuff something that you were drawn to as a child, or did you get into that later in life? I've always been a creative person. Um, It's it's taken many forms. Uh, I used to be more into performance as a child. I studied a BTEC National Diploma in Scarborough at the Art College there Mm -hmm. um, in 1996. I moved on from that into music, so I was in a couple of bands um, in my 20s. I'd always painted, but never really had a true focus. So um, I started an access course at York College in 2011, which then led me to my degree at Leeds College of Art, which then led me to all sorts of different community projects. Mm. So are you from York originally or have you moved around a bit? Yeah, I am from York originally, but I did move away when I was 10. Um, so in well, 1989, 1990 mm-hmm. to the East Coast. So I lived um, near Filey and then in Scarborough and in Whitby. Mm. And then we all moved back, uh, me and a a load of my friends, to York in about 2001. Been here ever since. So do you feel kind of any of that's influenced your work? I would say so, definitely. I'd say more what's influenced my work is people, really. Mm. The amount of people I've met, the different places I've lived, villages, towns and cities they they do have an effect on your work and I think mainly it's the facilitator facilitator in me that it's had an effect on because I've become really interested in people and communities and groups of people. Mm. Do you have any other kind of early experiences that you feel has shaped the way you work? Um, I think that the p- type of person that I am has shaped my work so I've, I've, I'm an elder sister um, I've got uh, quite a lot of younger siblings. Okay, uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, so you kind of, I kind of became like a bit of a, without being big Z, a bit of a leader, a bit of a spokesperson. Yeah. And that kind of fed through into my community in the village I lived in. So mm-hmm. we'd have lots of children coming from different cities to the village and I'd be like introducing them. <laughs> and, and, and you know, we'd make dens and we'd make these communities. Um, and that's really fed through. It's something that's always stayed with me, really, this kind of... Um, want to sort of be around people and uh, make things happen with different people yeah yeah it's interesting you say that because it's sort of something that's always been in the back of my mind but I've never really kind of given much thought to I've yeah. always kind of been aware that because I've got four younger brothers like right. often they would ask me like oh how does this work or this kind of thing and like you don't want to say I don't know so it's like oh well, let's find out yeah. and then before you know it you're kind of opening up a computer or doing something weird like yeah, that yeah you definitely you've, you've got to have the know-how as an elder mm. <laughs> So um, tell me about the process of when you've got an idea and you want to bring it to life. What's your kind of, do you have any any go-to things that you do or is each project different? Well, I I do a lot of things. I'm quite multidisciplined. Mm. So I'll do my own artwork, um, jewellery and I'll facilitate. Um, Facilitating often starts from um, sitting around (laughs) with a group of people, um, maybe at the Golden Ball. (laughs) Um, and discussing and getting angry and getting passionate about something um, that we feel that should happen, that could happen, and making it happen, really, from that seed. Mm. So, again, people, communication is is what normally spans things off for me. Mm. So tell me about a recent project, then. So my most recent project is the York River Art Market. It's coming into its third consecutive year now. Um, and that is, uh, we're award winning now. We're running this summer by the uh, river, Dame Judy Dench Walk, uh, for 10 dates this year. So nice. it's a bit of a whopper. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot to um, a lot to do. 
Yeah. So is it just you organising it or do you have help from other people? Initially, yeah, it was just me and that was okay. But obviously I was balancing everything. Mm. So perhaps advertising wasn't getting as much attention as it could do and, and et cetera. You know what it's like organising things. It's There's a lot to do. So I do have help this year from mm. a good friend of mine, Kate Fenton, who's organising all the admin and social media, which is brilliant. Mm, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so where did the idea come from then? Were you just walking along there and you thought, you know, this place really needs some art or did it come along some other way? Um, well, actually, it came through a woman called Sophie uh, Jewett, who runs the Yacht Coco House. Okay. Uh, I was working with her for four years and she, the whole time, supported me throughout my college and my university by allowing me to have the hours of work that was suitable. And she'd been speaking to a gentleman at the council who'd suggested someone had said to him that that space should be used, but they had no idea. Mm. So she threw it to me and I suggested an art market and that's how it happened. Mm. <laughs> Went from there. And you do a lot of work supporting charities, sorry? Uh, well, this, I, I always, always think that if you're going to facilitate something, um, the point of it is to help as many people as you can. Um, and so because I've got help this year, it's much more concentrated and I've been able to specifically reach out to charities that mean something to me. Uh, we have helped charities la um, last year, um, Converge, who are, are a, a group that um, help adults with mental health problems uh, through the arts. They were on board with us last year. And also um, Mary uh, patis uh, patisserie mm -hmm. can't say her name sorry mary <laughs> um she um brought her adults with autism group um who were amazing and shared the river with us um this year we have selected island um the mentoring scheme for young vulnerable children uh, to be our chosen charity mm -hmm. and we've also got another three charities on board as well so what can people see then if, if somebody's never been along, if they come in for the first time, is it just painting or is there lots of other stuff? Yeah, you can see jewellery, ceramics, photography. We've got live music. Uh, there's a children's area this year. Um, we've we've got, you name it, it, it would be there. And it's people that make original art, mm -hmm. um, established and emerging artists. So what are the dates? So the dates... 10 dates, as I said, all Saturdays from mm -hmm. July the 7th to the 1st of September. There are one, there's one Sunday, that's the 26th of uh, August, that's a bank holiday. So other than that, all Saturdays, so yeah. So what else have you got planned for 2018 then, either for the market or personally in your personal work? Uh, well, the market's, um, I'm feeling really the roots of the market are really strengthening and I'm really um, much more confident about that. So um, there's that, but also personally, I'm doing a PGC at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching art and design at York College. So I'm really, really enjoying that challenge. Um, again, it's about community and about bringing access to art, essentially. I'm also doing my own work. Um, I've got a, I'm part of a joint exhibition at the moment at the Golden Ball mm -hmm. with a collective that I started a long time ago called the uh, Open, Open Art York Collective. Uh, and I hope to get back on to my jewellery as well, mm. which I'm really missing. So <laughs> so if there's somebody who's watching who's mm. perhaps interested in art but doesn't quite want to commit to doing, you know, a full course or for paying for kind of art education, what are some resources or maybe groups or people you'd recommend they look up? I'd really recommend, um, I'm a firm believer in um, co contacting people and networking and not being... I know it's not easy, so I, I don't want to say not being shy because it's easy to be shy, but Facebook's a really good source, your um, page, your creatives. Yeah. Um, so there's all this access on Facebook and all these artist groups where you can find information about groups that are going on in York. There's lots of our artists um, at the art market that run their own um, workshops, mm -hmm. you know. So there's local workshops going on that are vary in price you know so there's something for everybody out there york is a really small place once you tap into the creative scene um it's very easy to get established and therefore it's, it is easy to access it once you start to look for it mm. 
So just go out and do it. <laughs> Be creative. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think are the key issues facing York's creative scene at the moment? That's a tricky one for me because I don't really let things get in my way. <laughs> <laughs> but looking at what other people are doing, and there are so many brilliant, brilliant, um, courageous people like yourself getting up there and doing Thank things. <laughs> so, all right. Um, and basically the issues for me that I see a lot are, um, I have seen in past, uh, that people get really, really concentrated on their own projects and perhaps don't realise the importance of making a bridge with somebody else to strengthen mm. that project. I've heard a few negative comments like, there's so much going on in York. Um, there's so much that, you know, I can't go to this because of this. Mm. And actually I'm thinking about ways now, well, how do we come together in a sense and, and sort of say, well, there is X and X going on, but they all feed into each other naturally. They're all part of the scene. So I think that's an issue that for me is a bit of a mentor, uh, uh, mantra this year is to sort of build bridges. So we are accessible, we're not exclusive, you yeah. know, we are we are open and we are collaborating. We're collaborating with Bloom Festival oh, cool. this year. Um, so that's a festival celebrating 250 years of the Horticultural Society in York, which is the oldest Horticultural Society in Europe. So they're celebrating on our first weekend. So we're involved in that as well. So that's just an example of how we're collaborating. Uh, one example of how we're collaborating. Yeah, collaboration is such a big thing, particularly, yeah. obviously across everywhere, but particularly for creative people. Yeah. Because like, it's so easy to kind of drive yourself mad if you have an idea and you kind of can't yeah. get it done. But if you start bouncing things off other people and they put bits in, stir it up, you'll get something completely new. I agree. And going back to your question about, you know, people who maybe don't go to college, um, you know, I've got lots of friends that have not done a, a degree, but mm. maybe through joining the collective that I used to run, you know, now that's running itself. There's the, the people that are in it are running it. So just starting little things off that potentially you can leave and they can carry on. But you don't know how many people that's going to really inspire to get out and do their own thing. So you don't really need to go to college, but there's the essence is kind of networking and making them connections because we you just get so many brilliant ideas because mm. people are full of them. <laughs> <laughs> so who would be the person that you'd love to collaborate with if you could collaborate with anybody? Oh. If I could collaborate with anybody, well, you know, um, I'd I'd really love to build more bridges with um, the Super Joe Gardner, which we are starting. Really, um, his social vision uh, charity is is sort of making waves to open doors for people and actually um, sort of tackling them issues that we were just talking about. They're they're helping to build bridges and to open people's eyes to funding that's going on in the city uh, that you might not know about. Um, so I'd love to do more um, collaboration with him. He has done a piece on us for Social Vision. <laughs> but there's so many interesting people. We, we would just love to welcome people to the river, really, and, and see what happens. On a personal level, <laughs> I'd love to be making more of my own art and and using the wonderful galleries that we've got in york and and aiming to have my work in 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 some more of them mm. so what what's inspiring you at the moment what are you reading what are you do you listen to podcasts do you watch youtube videos things like that yeah well for a while i was really i've been really inspired by teaching podcasts okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um i have actually been listening to a, a lot of sort of teachery podcasts that have been inspiring me to kind of think um, for the bigger picture really about how we sort of tackle teaching and, and access and how we access in education and arts which is a big passion cool so we're down to my last question but before I ask that is there anything you'd like me to ask about that I've not talked about yet um no I mean um it'd be good to let you know that we are um our other charities that are coming this year to the art market are Martin House who are a hospice um, care for that, that care for young children um, and then we've got the accessible arts and media that are York based they're giving access to arts to all sorts of different um, people from different backgrounds and then we've got Blueberry Academy hopefully coming on board um, who do amazing things in the city as well so it'd be good for people to know that they're going to be there and that they can support these charities and mm. um, 
help them, you know, because they do amazing work. Okay. So if people want to see more of your work, where can mm-hmm. they go to see that? If you want to see more of my work that isn't the River Art Market, <laughs> then you can go to the Golden Ball. There's an exhibition on there for the next two weeks. Uh, it's part of um, Open Art Collective, Open Art York Collective, and I've got like four pieces of work there. Um, and that's that for the moment with my own work mm-hmm. whilst I'm doing the PGCE. But um, hopefully there'll be more out by the summer, I can spread yeah. my creative wings. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll put links to all the River Art Market and that That'll kind of stuff great. so people can click through. Yeah. Um, and if people want to get in touch, what's the best way for them to do that? The best way to get in touch regards the River Art Market is via our Facebook page because then our email's on there. Mm-hmm. So you can do that um, and Kate will respond. She'll uh, send you any information that you might need. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, well, thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me.